Stuben.com or call 1-866-STUBEN for more information. Stuben Trust Company, member FDIC and equal housing lender. Friday, Friday, Friday. Good morning, American, American, American. It's Friday. It's time for Okay, okay. Uh, enthusiastic as always, Paul Harvey. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, it is Friday. Finally Friday, the end of the week, and a Yahoo. Here we go. Here comes the weekend. Uh, man, what another beautiful morning out there. Man, it is just gorgeous. I, it's a little chilly, of course, right? It's autumn, right? So it just is an absolutely beautiful morning. Uh, you know, Brian, the first story you had in your newscast, this lady in Bath who was convicted of what child abuse or something? Yes, she she p- put out two cigarettes. Allegedly, twisted is the description uh, 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 was uh, twisted a, a lit cigarette into her five year old's forehead. Okay, you know what? I can't even think of anything to say. Okay, there we go. Uh yes. Also on the Brian's newscast, there. Uh, this is a deadline, or actually, it's mid- midnight, so it's about the twenty hours. Uh, if you want to register for the uh, November 5th election c- coming up, this is the deadline. Mail-in voter registration forms must be postmarked by midnight to be valid for the upcoming general election. If you have a New York driver's license, non-driver ID card, or learner's permit, you can register online up until midnight. And New Yorkers wanting to register in person may do so at the County Board of Elections and at most state agency offices throughout the state. But... Once again, it's got to be by midnight. Uh, the voter registration form can be downloaded uh, at the the uh, website uh, elections.ny.gov, G-O-V. And applicants can, all, or applicants can also find forms at state and federal government offices, local public libraries, and post offices. And remember that the, for the first time, New York will offer early voting for this election starting on October 26th and running through Sunday, November 3rd. So please contact your local Board of Elections for times and locations where early voting will be offered in your area. So, there you go. Uh, the pretty important stuff there. The very important to vote. That's right. Uh, let me see here. Well, what, you know, I have... <laughs> once again, I have a whole bunch of stuff this morning, and some of it is, actually, probably most of it is pretty weird stuff here. Uh, let me see, where do I start? Well, the climate change lunatic, uh, lunatics, <laughs> climate change activists, that's right, are at it again. The Extinction Rebellion, I think I mentioned that either this earlier this week or last week. It's this really far out left wing uh, climate thing, protesters or something. Extinction Rebellion. Well, they were at it again yesterday. Protesters in New York City brought traffic to a standstill in, uh, in uh, Times Square. So, let me see, and other places around the world, including London. Uh, anyway, so protesters in New York transported the green boat on a trailer into Times Square. Now, you normally don't find boats of any color in Times Square, but there it was. So, they sat down and didn't want to move, and a bunch of them were arrested. And the boat bore the logo of the activist group Extinction Rebellion. It also had the words Act Now written on it and a string of brightly colored flags. Well, that's kind of nice. Anyway, they had signs, uh, Save Our Future and uh, Protesting the Climate or something like that. Anyway, as I said, a bunch of them were arrested. And um, eventually traffic was brought back to normal, if it ever is normal in Times Square. Anyway, in London, a climate change activist climbed a British Airways plane uh, at London City Airport. So a video streamed by the group showed the activists clinging to the fuselage. I don't know exactly how that's going to change the climate, but that's what he did, and there you are. Anyway, in a separate incident, a BBC a News Night editor, Nicholas Watt, tweeted, there it is, tweeted, uh, that his flight from London to Dublin had been grounded after a protester stood up to deliver a lecture on climate change, just as the plane was ready to take off. So that thing was uh, grounded, <laughs> delayed or something. Anyway, so uh, protests taking part uh, in cities around the world, and there you go. So they're protesting climate change. I still don't know, I still don't understand how you can protest the climate changing. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to change. 
you're, you're just you're spinning your wheels, pal, because climate's going to change. That's what it does. Okay, speaking about anxiety, whether climate anxiety or whatever anxiety you have, this is from, uh, again, Study Finds, a great, great website, Study Finds. It's all kinds of studies and research on this and that. It says, we are a nervous nation. Really? One in five Americans believe they have an undiagnosed anxiety disorder. One in five. So, you're anxious, but you don't know what, really what you're anxious about. I don't exactly understand that, but anyway... It says, <clears throat> anxiety has always been an uncomfortable fact of life. Even the calmest of individuals experience the occasional nervous moment. But is anxiety on the rise in modern society? That's what this whole show is about. I mean, people are just gone totally lunatic. Anyway, uh, is anxiety on the rise in modern society? According to a new survey of 2,000 Americans, the answer is a resounding yes. A shocking one in five respondents say they feel anxious so often that they actually believe they're dealing with an undiagnosed anxiety disorder. And I don't want to seem insensitive here, but my advice would be get over it. Okay? At the risk of seeming really insensitive, just get over it. Anyway, the survey uh, by a CBD company polled Americans on their day-to-day -day anxious feelings and discovered that the average American experiences five Five anxious moments every day. All righty, five anxious moments. Interestingly, these anxious moments often lead to feelings of self-consciousness as well. Just, okay, uh, four in ten of respondents, a little more than four in ten of respondents, say they've been overwhelmed by their anxiety, which then causes them to feel embarrassed, which makes them feel more anxious, which makes them feel even more embarrassed. Anyway, in fact, almost three-quarters of respondents say they are embarrassed after every single anxious moment. I'm, you know, I'm not making this stuff up. I'm really not. I'm reading this right here. Uh, <clears throat> These statistics shine a revealing light on just how far we as a nation have to go to remove the stigma from mental health problems and negative feelings. Among respondents who admit to feeling embarrassed by their anxiety... Six in ten say it's because they believe they should be a stronger person, and another five in ten, a little more than five in ten, say they feel isolated and different from their peer. Really? Your your peers feel anxious too. So okay, everybody everybody's anxious. Um okay. So what are Americans' biggest anxiety triggers? Hmm. Work was listed as the number one source of anxiety among respondents, with just under half listing it as their most frequent trigger. And that's followed by social events, or going out, financial worries, and romantic relationship issues. All right, um, who is this? Uh, Henry Vincente, CEO of that CBD uh, company. He says, uh, <clears throat> from social anxiety to panic attacks, mental health in America is a very real issue. Our research highlights that sadly, there is still social stigma surrounding mental health issues as millions of Americans refuse to seek treatment because they feel embarrassed. More often than not, this anxiety is stimulated by the churning of everyday anxiety induces that can have lasting effects. Holy mackerel. I mean, okay, let me see. Uh, further, let me see. Our social, oh, social media, hmm. Yes. Social media is contributing significantly to this rise in anxious Americans as well, with 35% of respondents listing Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as major sources of their day-to-day -day anxiety. When asked why social media is stressing them, uh, stressing them out so much, respondents said the pressure to be perfect is often too much to handle, as well as the belief that they need to portray themselves as successful and funny online. <clears throat> Furthermore, 7 in 10 respondents say that comparing their lives to other people on social media makes them feel inadequate and unsuccessful. Well, you know, man, you know, <laughs> if you're going to feel anxious, I, I just, just, as I said, get over it. Just get, it's very simple. Get over it. Okay, but anyway, 
Uh, all that anxiety is bound to take a physical toll. And a whopping 9 in 10 Americans say that they're losing sleep due to their anxiety. The average responder reports losing two hours of sleep per night, which comes out to 730 hours or one month of sleep a year. While it's clear that our culture's approach to anxiety isn't where it needs to be, eight in 10 respondents say they believe anxiety is more socially acceptable now than it was in the past. Of course it is, because, because, because everybody's anxious. So yeah, right, anxiety group, climate anxiety groups. Um, every, everybody, all uh, right, an undiagnosed, undiagnosed anxiety disorder. Man, I don't know. Okay, fine. Well, there goes that. And here is, uh, where did I find this? This is on Fox Business. Anxiety. All righty. Half, I guess I do have a theme this morning, don't I? I do. Half of millennials, half, have left their jobs over mental health reasons. Young people are spearheading mental health awareness at the workplace. About half of millennials and three quarters of Gen Zers, that's even younger, have quit their jobs for mental health reasons, according to a new study conducted by MindShares Partners, SAP, whatever that is, and Quadrix, whatever that is. Anyway, uh, the uh, study was, uh, was published in the Harvard Business Review. And that's compared to just 20% of respondents overall who said they voluntarily left the job in order to prioritize their mental health, emblematic of a shift in generational awareness. The authors of the report wrote, for baby boomers, the number was the lowest, with less than 10% quitting a job for mental health reasons. All right, it should come as no surprise that younger generations are paving the way for the destigmatization of mental health. A Wall Street Journal article published in March uh, says, uh, let's see, labeled the millennials, the therapy generation. The therapy generation, well, that, that's a great handle, isn't it, though? The therapy generation. As today's 20 and 30-somethings are more likely to, tune to ther uh, turn to therapy and with fewer reservations than young people in previous eras did. So, okay, fine. So they're leaving their jobs because of the, it makes them depressed or something? You know, every, everybody needs a job, right? Unless you happen to hit the lottery or maybe publish a clearinghouse, but everybody needs a job, you know? And you might not like it. It might not be the best thing in the world, but it's better than not having a job, right? So maybe, you, you know, if you want to find happiness, you're not going to find happiness on the job anyway. You do your job and you're paid, and that should be enough, you know. You're not going to find fulfillment on a job. You're going to find fulfillment outside of a job, in your personal life, right? So if you don't like your job, just either get another job or get over it. I mean, it's very simple. I, I don't know. Okay, fine. Uh, there's that one. So do we have... Speaking of therapy... <laughs> Okay, uh, okay, uh, let me see. Would this be Rob Carolyn? It would be, unfortunately. Unf How are you this morning, Jonathan? Oh, good. <laughs> so what are you feeling anxious about this morning, Rob? I'm talking about anxiety disorders here. Anything? Uh, my dad's health, actually. <laughs> okay, well, that's a real one. That's, that's real. That's certainly worth being anxious about. Okay, fine. But you mean things that don't, aren't really a problem? Well, I just had a story about young people are quitting their jobs in droves over mental health reasons. Apparently, they just can't handle their jobs or they don't like them or something. I don't understand it. Oh, are we talking about the generation of snowflakes that have been raised in this country? Uh, oh, I'm so happy you said that. I didn't want to use the word snowflake, but yeah, absolutely. You got it, pal. You got it. Well, you know, it's it's kind of funny because um, actually in visiting my dad at the hospital, um, we noticed all of the nurses are kind of like my age and older and here at my business our youngest employee is 46 and we have tried to hire people younger than that but it doesn't work out because when you tell them well you have to work at night and during the weekend and holidays huh. they look at you as if you're crazy oh no really and the oh, folks my. at the hospital said the younger people just want to walk around be in charge and carry a clipboard 
And that's not how it works. <laughs> they don't understand. You got to put your time in that. You got to get experience. I'm, you know, I, I, I really, and I have a 26 year old uh -huh. and she was raised in the house. You know, we tried to teach her the rules and she'd work a job like two days and she'd come home and it was like she had stayed at a holiday inn because she knew everything about the job. <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute, you've been there two days. They're not going to put you in charge. What's wrong with you? So I don't know where it's come from, to be honest. I, you know, I really, I really don't know either. I, you know, all of a sudden I start sounding like a really old guy. But well, man, we they are. That, <laughs> okay, well, yeah, all right, fine. Thank, thank you very much. And I'll, I'll see you next week, Rob. Okay, bye. <laughs> well, as I said, we are. <laughs> I threw myself in that pot. Oh you know, man. We can kind of drag Brian in with us. Well, Brian, he's, he's, he's getting up there. Not, not really too much. When I was a boy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yep, but uh, no, uh, the, uh, it's, I, I, anxiety I don't really suffer from. You know, I hear people who have anxiety issues, and I can't really relate. You know, I was always taught you tough it out. That's pretty much what I was taught, too. And that's, I don't know, it's 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 a different world, but there we are. We're just a bunch of old guys just kind of shooting the breeze here, you know. Uh, anyway, so That's right, and we're going to start to talk about the weather. At some point, yes. So what's the weather doing here? Hmm? Gorgeous. We're, we've been great. I mean, we've been in between two storm systems for days now. Uh, the east coast of uh, Massachusetts has had gusts over 40 miles an hour and rain day after day. They've had one to two feet of snow in the Dakotas. Uh, west of that, the Great Falls, Montana, yesterday morning dropped to zero. Uh, the earliest they've ever been that